Oh yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to the shop. It's a balmy summer night here in North Carolina. And uh, I've had it in my calendar to do some microwave experiments for six plus months. And uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. It's really sad. So one of my big questions was, what is the deal with microwaving stapled tea bags? You know, I was very apprehensive about doing this many years ago when I began doing it, and I never had a single incident. Uh, then I read somewhere that it only works in water, or it only works with, say, ceramic to insulate it. In other words, the coffee mug. So it kind of got me wondering, what would happen if you were to just microwave uh, a tea bag, staple tea bag, and not have any insulator? So, that's where I'm going to start. I have my uh, poking stick for safety. So, once this starts arcing, I'm going to immediately stop it. So, uh, pretty much what I expected, no arcing. What did happen? Well. I actually did see a very small amount of spark or arc, and I think it was from heat transfer. Although even the staples themselves are not actually that warm, the contents of the tea bag are warmer. So <laughs> it appears that uh, you cannot even cause an arc with one of these stapled tea bags. It's just not a large enough conductor. For it to be an issue. But if we were to throw maybe a few tea bags in. All right, so what I have here are six staples within a fairly close proximity. Well, yeah, the staples are a little bit hot, but they don't have enough thermal mass to really hold it. I did see again some small sparks, but uh, really nothing substantial. Well, I had wanted to test this with something practical, but uh, apparently I can't. <laughs> because these uh, actually don't have enough metal to even cause an issue. So if you're ever wondering about microwaving uh, a tea bag, Apparently you never have to worry about it if it has a little staple. Even if it has a couple staples, it's really not going to matter. So I'm going to need something else to stand in as a better piece of metal. Right here I have a two inch brad nail. So I'm going to see if I can get this to arc and I'm fairly confident it will. The adhesive on it will probably start stinking right away too. <laughs> yeah, that only took a few seconds to start arcing. <laughs> Beautiful. So, and let's see how hot that is. Eh, not that hot. It probably, again, couldn't hold that heat energy very well with such a small amount of thermal mass. However, as an inductor, this is actually a lot better. So something like this clearly can cause issues. So the thing I was wondering is, would it make any difference to put it inside of an insulator? So I have that brad nail in here, and uh, yes, glass is an insulator, but the first thing I'm going to do is put it open side up, and uh, that will give it at least one surface to potentially absorb that energy and arc. Wow. That is pretty surprising. Just putting it inside of this glass beaker completely insulated it electrically enough to prevent arcing. It's also very hot. Although, <laughs> the glass is hot actually, 
this again doesn't have enough thermal mass to become an issue. <laughs> you know, I was expecting to have to do all of these experiments to kind of figure out, you know, what would happen. Uh, like, what would it take to stop that arcing? And it takes so little to stop the arcing, I'm just kind of baffled. So, so this really requires at least some arcing for me to be able to try to mitigate that in various ways. So I'm switching over to a glass petri dish. It's brand new, although I can see it has some defects. So hopefully it doesn't crack or explode in there. Uh, let's see if this will still arc. <laughs> it's astonishing. <laughs> a brad nail. A fairly substantial amount of metal will not arc even in an insulator as small as this petri dish. You know, this is only a couple millimeters, maybe a millimeter in thickness or so, and uh, it's enough of an insulator to prevent it from arcing. Gosh. I do think there is a pretty high chance of this petri dish cracking because it does have some defects. Nope. No arcing. Now, uh, an interesting thing about this is it actually did start to boil right around that brad nail and nowhere else. So, it is actually catching that inductive energy of the microwaves and uh, getting hotter than the rest. So, I read something kind of interesting. I read that uh, you can actually microwave a piece of foil if it's flat. Oh boy. This, this tray itself is actually really pretty hot too. <laughs> the center area is really, really hot. Interesting. So in theory, this should not arc because it is over an inch from all sides and it is flat. It's not perfectly flat, but it's pretty flat. If this was crinkled up or in a curved shape, apparently it would actually be a much bigger problem. So let's see if that's true. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's that about? This thing's supposed to be safe to microwave flat. Admittedly, it's uh, thin, and it was not over an inch away from the bottom. Let's see if we add a little bit more distance between the bottom, if that'll help. All right, so that's about an inch and a half from the bottom and over an inch from all the sides. I'm pretty sure that's still going to arc. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. Look at that. Indeed, a flat sheet of aluminum foil, if distanced properly, will not arc. In theory, what it does is reflect the microwave energy and uh, heat up whatever the substrate is even more. And that's one thing I wanted to point out. Apparently, microwaves are like 40% the efficiency of, say, an electric kettle. Uh, but I don't think that's really true. You know, that was done with a, an experiment heating up water, but water is not an ideal conductor. It's not going to catch all of that energy. It's not that the microwave is inefficient. It's that the water is not an ideal substance for actually gauging efficiency. I'll get to that a little bit later, though. So, <laughs> that's pretty radical, right? You can microwave a sheet of foil. Now, what I wanted to test is, if you can do that with a flat sheet, what if you curve it a little bit? You know? I'm going to... I'm just going to actually kind of roll this up a little bit into a, a ball. In theory, this should really mess it up. However, I'm testing a theory that it actually doesn't have to do with the flatness, it has to do with the distance. 
because arcing is due to the impedance being low enough for it to actually electrically ground to any of these edges of the chamber of the microwave. So in theory, if we distance it enough, maybe it won't arc. Indeed, how much does it have to do with the flatness? It would appear not a lot, although I have changed this. This is no longer as good at collecting the energy because I rolled it into a ball. So I'm going to have to make it good at collecting energy, but not a flat surface. I suppose just the act of crinkling this should help with that because now I have all of these edges which can act as points where it might arc. Well, this is far from perfectly flat at this point. It even had a corner that was pretty high, and uh, it's still a large surface area for collecting the energy, and yet it still did not arc. I gotta say, this piece of wood's getting very hot. <laughs> so it probably has increased the efficiency. <laughs> well, that kind of begs the question though, uh, is that all it really takes? Is that all it takes to prevent arcing when you microwave metal? Let's put a few other objects in here and see what we find. I have here a metal washer, which I think is going to have some interesting characteristics because of its shape. And it's a fairly thick gauge as well. Wouldn't be surprised if that actually left some burn marks on the wood. Wow. I can actually hear the washer. I know, actually, that's not the washer. It's the uh, resin left in the wood cooking. Let's see, how hot is the washer? Well, it didn't leave any burn marks. It is very hot though. Very hot. <laughs> this piece of wood is getting cooked pretty good though. You can see that the resin is starting to come out of it. What if we were to do this in water? Let's see if it helps heat up the water even better. If I'm going to do that though, I should really gauge this stuff. So I have here approximately 50 milliliters of water and my metal washer. And from previous experiments, we know that this was enough to prevent the brad nail from arcing, just due to the insulative qualities of this glass. Will that still be the case with a more substantial object like this washer? I can't say. Looks pretty hot. All right, so we have landed at 62 degrees Celsius. And I know that my temperature was initially 26 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty good. Now what I'd like to do is find out the rise without the metal washer. So I had actually thought that uh, the metal washer would have helped, but uh, water on its own actually got to 67 degrees. So 
So that didn't help at all. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. I guess that what happened was the metal actually absorbed some of that energy and uh, instead of the water. So, interesting. <clears throat> I wouldn't be too surprised if this held the temperature longer because of that washer having more energy, maybe. Because you'll notice the steam. When water gets too hot, it becomes steam or eventually hits boiling point, and then it starts to vaporize. Uh, so that energy is lost. It's a release of energy. So by this having a lower temperature and that metal washer in there, it means that more energy is actually going to be in here as a heat sink. Whereas uh, this one will have released more of that energy in the form of vapor. So I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this actually held energy better. So here's that Petri dish and the much more substantial metal washer. In case you're wondering, these are all 30 second cycles. If by 30 seconds it's not arcing, then uh, it probably could arc, but it would require a, a dramatic temperature rise. Like, you can actually melt metal in a microwave. It just requires you to not lose too much of that thermal energy by using an insulator. That's how you can use those microwave jewelry kits and stuff. Huh, it's actually really not that hot. Which means that, uh, not ideal for capturing the energy, I guess. Hmm. Wonder if maybe a nail would work better. Here is, uh, again, magnitudes more metal, more steel. Uh, this is a bolt, so weighs quite a lot more. I should point out, I'm actually not trying to destroy my microwave. This is a microwave for experimenting, so it wouldn't really bother me that much, but that doesn't mean I want to risk a fire or anything like that. So that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is actually to see how we can mitigate uh, the hazards of microwaving metal, not how to create them necessarily. I've never tried a piece of metal this large before. Unbelievable. All it takes to stop metal from arcing is a small amount of insulator. And uh, <laughs> the bolt itself is quite cool. The glass is substantially hotter. Wow. I mean, this is like body temperature warm, but this is more like 130, 140 Fahrenheit, something like that. Wow. Crazy. Now, disclaimer here, uh, a caveat of this, if you're trying to replicate it at home, is that this is a specific microwave. Microwaves vary dramatically. So depending on the wattage and the specific frequencies and perhaps the scatter wave, uh, it could be different. For example, this does not have a scattering device on top to distribute the microwaves in a more random pattern for even heating. Instead, it just rotates the bottom, which is fine, but uh, it means that your microwave might actually arc under some of these circumstances. So it's the kind of thing you could test, but uh, just because it isn't happening here doesn't mean it can't happen. So this has me wondering, what about our friend aluminum foil with the huge surface area for collecting the energy? Surely this could still arc. Yep, there's some arcing. Just a little. Now what I immediately noticed is, uh, yeah, you can actually see right here, maybe if this focuses, what actually happened was that it was arcing, oh yeah, it was actually arcing between the fold of the foil. And uh, what's actually happened is that it's actually welded to the other sheet. Interesting. So the arc still didn't happen between 
the uh, walls of the microwave and the conductor. Instead, it happened between the conductor and the conductor. That's kind of neat. So that means that even with a good insulator, it doesn't matter if it can arc to itself. So with that in mind, I'm going to give this kind of a swirl pattern in its folding. Nothing to write home about. There was some arcing, but the uh, distances were too far, apparently. So I guess I need actually a tighter roll than that. Now we have many folds. Let's see if that acts a bit like a capacitor. Just the one arc that time. <laughs> it's pretty cool actually. It's uh, larger on the outside and as each layer was penetrated it was a smaller amount of uh, material melted down. So this time I'm going to try uh, four folded over layers in a kind of sandwich. Well, that was a pretty good one. Huh, look at that, it's around the same spot. Pretty good, huh? All right, so this configuration appears to be one of the better ones. It's uh, melted uh, a whole corner area. So what I was wondering was whether water would actually prevent that effect. And actually I have to say it didn't make much of a difference. So I was thinking, would the water act more as an insulator, or would it uh, cause the impedance to be even lower? One thing I didn't think about until it was actually going already was whether, oh look at that, you can see the two spots where I was eating away. One thing I hadn't really considered until it was already microwaving was whether the uh, steam would lower the impedance, much like rain in a lightning storm. But it didn't really seem to change anything. So overall, not really that interesting. Uh, you can pretty easily insulate metal from the walls of the microwave, which prevents damage to the appliance itself. However, there was still plasma arcing when the conductor was in close proximity so that the uh, energy could arc to itself. And uh, that's actually not that big of a deal, I don't think. I don't think that would really damage the appliance much. Really the thing that you want to avoid is uh, any kind of electrical arcing to the walls and uh, what would essentially cause overheating of the transformer, which is sort of the lifeline of the microwave. So this is a little bit lame because it has not been washed sufficiently or processed, but this is some amorphous carbon from uh, sulfuric acid reacting with sugar, uh, which is a nice high quality amorphous carbon, but it's not normalized yet. Uh, it probably still has some sulfuric acid in it in spite of neutralizing because I did not grind it down and give it a good washing. So it was reacting a little bit with itself Yes, that could put some sulfuric acid into the uh, air, some vapor. However, I don't think there's really that much in there after uh, having it bathe in baking soda for weeks. So it seemed like a very mild reaction. Now, I have done some carbon experiments using unnormalized structures, and they have complex properties electrically, which means this could arc. Uh, especially when it hits certain clusters of this structure with high surface area. But what I really wanted to test was just how much energy it would absorb. Not necessarily whether it would arc. It looks like it's around 50 milliliters, pretty close. Not the most scientific thing I've ever done, I'll put it that way. Well, I saw it boiling, which is already a big difference. 
Indeed, we're at about 77 degrees centigrade. That is a uh, substantial jump. So that was about 10 degrees centigrade higher than plain water, which is kind of what I expected. I haven't done a lot of experiments yet. I think part of it is the electrical properties of carbon, but I think the other part of it is uh, something as simple as the color being black, for example, because I think it's actually absorbing some of the infrared energy that would normally be lost. Anyway, I plan to do a lot more experiments with microwaves uh, over the next few years, really. So I hope that inspires you to play with your microwave a little bit. They are very cheap at thrift shops. A lot of people just chuck them in the trash. It's easy to gain access to them. Uh, be safe, of course. Have your safety sticks. And uh, try not to explode anything. They won't really explode, but you can short the transformer and cause fires. Or you could explode the materials you're working on, pressure vessels, for example. So remember to use caution. Remember to have yourself ready to turn it off at any time. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll keep making them. I plan to focus more on the science end of things for a while because I don't think there's a lot of interest in some of the uh, woodworking, carpentry things. Seems like more people are interested in the science. Thanks for watching.